morning, everybody. My name is Joe Waters, and I am an IT analyst with HCSS. And this morning, we're going to be talking about mobile device management. Uh, this webinar is going to be geared more towards the IT administrator side of things, and they're looking for a mobile device management solution to help streamline and increase their efficiency in the deployment of mobile devices throughout the organization. Some of the things we're going to touch on in this webinar and see demonstrations of uh, monitor, manage, and secure an employee's mobile device, geographically locate a device, monitor, maintain device inventory, enforce device security profiles, send notifications directly to the device, force operating system updates to make sure they stay current, and automatically install applications that your company may want to have on that device. So, what is MDM? MDM is an acronym for Mobile Device Management. Uh, it's a type of security software used by an IT department to monitor, manage, and secure an employee's mobile device uh, that are excuse me, deployed across multiple mobile service providers and across multiple mobile operating systems being used in the organization. Uh, that is just something I found on the web and copy and pasted into here that seemed like a good description. Uh, to break it down for you, MDM is nothing more than a method for controlling mobile devices. There's typically a app or a management profile on the device, and in the case of Meraki, which is the one we use, there is a web-based backend to where you enforce all of those settings. When it comes to MDM vendors, there is a plethora of choices. Uh, in my brief search on the internet, these are the top Oh, 20 or so that I came up with. Um, some of these are pretty big names. I'm sure everybody's heard of SAP. Uh, the one down here, Mass360, is actually a product by IBM. You'll notice that Meraki is highlighted here, and that is because that's the one we use in-house. Meraki is based in San Francisco, California. Uh, back in December of 2012, they were acquired by Cisco Systems. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Cisco. Their primary business is networking hardware. Um, we have been using Meraki since August of 2013, and we currently have it deployed in-house on about 150 devices, give or take. Uh, our disclaimer at the bottom, we are not affiliated with, and we in no way endorse Meraki. It's just the one that we chose to use and it's the one we are most familiar with. What devices can you put Meraki on? And I'm pretty sure this is uh, true of most MDM vendors. Uh, on the left side of the screen, you'll see a phone. Meraki can be installed on iOS phones, iPhones, Android phones, and uh, although I've never seen them in the wild, I've been told that there are Windows mobile phones. Meraki does have an app for those as well. On the desktop slash laptop side of things there in the center of the screen, they can run on Mac OS, Windows, and if you have Chromebooks, Meraki can also run on the Chrome OS. Tablet-wise, uh, iPads with iOS and Android tablets as well. Before I get in uh, to the Meraki side of things, I want to make you aware of something called Apple DEP, which is short for Device Enrollment Program. Uh, of our 150 devices that we have Meraki deployed on, uh, almost all of them are iPads. Um, what Apple DEP does is it is a method of basically stating who owns that device at the time of purchase. So I won't go into setting up Apple DEP, that's outside the scope of this webinar, but briefly if we've got it set up to where we have an account with the Apple Store for Business where we purchase all of our Apple products from including the iPads we use in Meraki and they know that through a security certificate exchange that we have set up with their device enrollment program that when we purchase that device, they automatically enroll it in Apple DEP uh, with the serial number of the device, and that proves that this organization owns that device. Now, you do not have to set up a device with Apple DEP if you don't want to go that route. 
but it's going to somewhat limit the functionality of Meraki and I'm assuming other MDM vendors as well. If you want to get the most use out of the MDM product of your choice, uh, it is good to set up DEP. And there's some links on here if you want to uh, look into how to do that. So what can Meraki do? Um, Meraki can geographically locate a device and I'm going to go into each one of these in depth a little bit more in just a second. It can assist with inventory by assigning devices to end users to help us keep track of who has a device. Uh, we can enforce security policies and settings and there are a whole lot of them that I'll show you in, here in just a minute. You can lock a device, unlock a device, you can selectively erase a device, or you can completely wipe a device if you so choose. Uh, you can also put a device in what is called lost mode, which basically bricks the device until whoever has that device brings it to the, your IT department to unbrick it. It, it renders it completely useless. Uh, you can send notifications to the end user. You can force OS updates to make sure that your particular device has the most recent uh, updates on it, OS updates. And you can use it to automatically install applications. This is useful if your company may have a suite of apps that you need to make sure are on every device that you have deployed. Uh, there is a method that to where even if the device, uh, excuse me, if the application is a paid for app, they charge money for it, you can pay the money up front and it will issue you X number of licenses, however many uh, copies of the app you have bought, and then you can selectively install them to one or all of the devices uh, that MDM is currently overseeing. So they don't necessarily have to be free. It worked with free and paid applications as well. So let's go into some of these. Geographically located device. Uh, you'll see here, there's a screenshot on the left I took. And that is actually our HCSS campus. They're located in Sugarland on West Airport Boulevard. You'll see the purple ring of where it thinks this particular device was at when I took the screenshot. On the right, it shows how Meraki approximates the location of a managed device. Uh, the most accurate of all of these is the first one, which is GPS. Um, you can get pretty close to exactly where a device is at with that. The downside is that iPads don't have a GPS chip in them unless they are the cellular version of the iPad, like with uh, one you have tied to AT&T or Verizon or whoever. If it's just the run-of-the-mill iPad that uses Wi-Fi only, it doesn't have a GPS chip in it. Uh, therefore, it relies on some of these other methods. The one we have set up for our iPads is the bottom one, which is IP geolocation. Our devices, if they obtain an IP address here on our wireless network inside the building, we know the IP address, the external IP address it's going to get. And we've told Meraki that if you see a device that has this IP address assigned to it, it has to be in this building somewhere. So then we gave it an address of where we live. It knows the device has this IP address. It's got to be here in the building somewhere. If you were to leave, it would lose its Wi-Fi wi connection. Let's say you went home and connected it to your home Wi-Fi. You're not going to get the same public IP address so it knows that you're no longer here in the building. Uh, you, there's a couple of other methods that it uses as well. Um, BSSID, uh, sometimes uh, service providers know where a Wi-Fi is located at, so it goes that route. And if you have Meraki, uh, Cisco Meraki uh, access points installed in your building, it can use those as well to determine uh, where, where they're located at. Although I don't know how useful that would be in other locations because not everybody would have those installed. Uh, assisting with inventory by assigning devices. Uh, this is really the main reason we started using Meraki here is because uh, so many of our employees need iPads for either uh, writing the applications, uh, QA needs them to test the applications, uh, support needs them to troubleshoot any issues with our mobile apps, uh, our salesmen need them when they are demoing for people. So as you can see over time, we just had so many of these devices out that we were unable to keep track of them, so this is why we looked into uh, an MDM solution. And as you can see here, this is a screenshot I took. 
Um, our naming convention shows first and last name dash iPad, so we know what it is. Uh, they are tied to our Active Directory account. Uh, it shows what device they have, for instance, iPad Air, iPad Air 2, etc. Uh, the now column just means that they are currently have a network connection. The little green bar you see next to it, I believe, represents either the last 12 or 24 hours of network connection. So if it's solid green, that means it's been on the network, or at least a network, uh, for the last uh, 12 or 24 hours, whichever one it is. Uh, if there's a gap in it uh, at some point, maybe the uh, user turned it off, uh, left the building, put it in the car, and it didn't reconnect until they got to their house or whatever. The final column you see is just a serial number of the device. You can also enforce security policies and settings uh, profiles, and I'll actually open up the, the web back end for this here in a second so you can see and I'll go over some of these. Uh, let me slide this out of the way. So the first thing we'll look at is uh, security policies, which is under Systems Manager Configure Policies. You can have as many security policies set up as you want, but for simplicity, we just have one set up for this demo. And uh, there are several things that you can set up to be mandatory in the security policy. Um, if it's a desktop, you can say things like uh, it requires a login, requires a firewall. You can blacklist things that you do not want running on the desktop. Uh, you can also make mandatory apps on there. Uh, if it's OSX, uh, you can enforce disk encryption, Windows, you can enforce antivirus, any spyware. Mobile devices, you can enforce if it has a passcode lock. Uh, the only one for this demo we have checked off is devices not compromised, which basically means it can't be rooted or jailbroken. If it does, uh, we would get a notification about it. This one down here is useful if you put it on uh, iPhones or Android phones. Um, you can limit the amount of data that a user can have. So if you have a company-wide cellular plan to where everybody shares in that data plan, uh, you might have a user who's using a little bit too much data and it's cutting it off uh, prematurely before you reach the end of the month. You can actually limit the amount of data that this particular user would be allowed to use. Um, the other thing is, and this is where we're really going to get granular, is under settings here. Um, there is a whole list of things you can say are or are not allowed on a device. And uh, you can see here we can say uh, you allow the use of a camera and this means it applies to iOS, Android, or Windows. That's what these little uh, icons on the on the right mean. You know, is it allowed to use a device assistant, Siri or Cortana? Um, can it use Siri while locked? And you go down here, you have even more. There is just a whole lot of settings that you can set up. Uh, you can allow in-app purchases. You can say whether or not multiplayer gaming is allowed. Um, you scroll through this. There is just a whole bunch of stuff you can set up for here. Um, down at the bottom, if you want to limit what uh, what movies that somebody could watch on their device, you can set a rating on it. Same thing for TV shows. Same thing for apps. They have to be age appropriate. And there's even more settings if you click on the next tab. Um, you can allow, you know, the iMessage app. You can make it to where they can't delete an app. Um, Siri profanity filter. Uh, you can allow the app store or not. Uh, pretty much any setting in the device, you can make it allowable or not allowable through this. Down here, show and hide apps. You can restrict app usage. If you want to allow all apps, do not allow the following apps or only allow the following apps. And then, of course, if you have it on a Windows device, there are certain restrictions that apply just to that. And that's just under restrictions. We move over to privacy. We can make it to where uh, 
we can allow it to track the device, which is uh, useful for geolocation, like I showed earlier. Uh, allow SSID tracking to see what SSIDs they're attached to. This is useful here. Uh, our in-house public Wi-Fi is called Guest at HCSS. So when we set up a device with these, we make it auto-join Guest so that the minute a uh, device comes onto our campus, it automatically joins Guest and has a network connection. You enter the password here. You tell it the type of security. Um, wallpaper. Uh, you can enforce what kind of wallpaper they have. You can make it static to where they can't change it. Or you can just put one on there like we do that says, hey, this is an HCSS device. Uh, the user has the option to change it later if they so choose. Oh, and there's one other thing I wanted to show you. It's under here and DEP. This is extremely useful. If you've ever taken a, a brand new iPad or uh, iPhone out of the box and set it up the first time, you know that... Um, they ask you about 20 questions of all the stuff you want to set up and do. We've got it set up to where the minute we take it out of the box, the only thing we have to do is connect it to the, the Wi-Fi, which is the very first thing it asks you. And at that point, it pulls down an iOS mobile that we have set up. And I'll show you some of the... It allows us to skip all of those questions. Like we skip passcode, restore from backup, Apple ID, terms and conditions, touch ID, etc., etc. So setting up a device is extremely quick. We don't have to sit there and answer each one of those questions that Apple asks every time. It just automatically knows the answer to it. Very, very useful if you set up a lot of tablets like we do. Uh, mobile security on the device. You can do things like clear a passcode, lock a device. You can selectively wipe a device. You can erase the device completely, factory reset it. If there's an activation lock on the device, uh, you can disable it. You can also show the bypass code if you don't know it. Uh, you can also put it in loss mode, which effectively bricks the device. And I'll go back over here to my management console and show you what some of those things are. So let's go back over here. I'm going to find the particular tablet that I have set up. And this is what the, uh, the management portal looks like for a particular device. It shows the location where it's at. Like right now, it knows that uh, we are at the HCSS campus. Uh, it knows that it's assigned to our IT department. We can name it. Um, I, can I can ask it to refresh the location if I want to see where it's at. I don't know how often it pings the device, but if I need it uh, instantaneously, I can click that. tells me if encryption is present, if I have a passcode, if, if it's jailbroken and my security policy is in check, it's green. All my management settings are up to date. Uh, I can even see how much uh, storage is being used on the device, if it's full of apps or not. I can see my uh, public IP. Wi-Fi, Mac, and uh, Bluetooth Mac. Uh, I, I can force it to check in now. Uh, this has been online uh, for the past, uh, I guess it's 12 hours or so. Uh, down here is where we get into the mobile security I was just talking about. For this device, I can clear a passcode. I can lock it. And by locking it, it just means uh, the same thing as you would do as if you locked a device. It doesn't necessarily mean you're breaking it. We'll get into that in a second. I can selectively wipe, or if I click this, it's going to ask me uh, if I want to remove all managed apps and profiles but keep the device under management. Are you sure? I'm going to click cancel because I don't want to do that. Erase device. This is a factory reset. This is bringing it back to just like it was brand new out of the box. This is useful if uh, maybe you have a device that uh, somebody's lost and you may have sensitive company data on it that you want to make sure nobody gets their hands on. You can wipe the device and it, it will it'll be gone. Uh, activation lock, you can disable it here. Uh, if you wanted to, to get past it, you can show the bypass code. Uh, it's okay if you guys see this. This is randomly generated every time for the device uh, that lets me get in. But if, say, if, I, if the device is locked and I don't know how to get into it, this will let me get past it. Uh, send notification. Do a test message right here. I will actually bring my tablet over to the screen so you guys can see it. And if I hit send, 
there should be a notification that pops up right there, a test message. So if you need to send a message to a user, you have that ability. GPS location, um, I can request the location. This is the same thing as clicking it like I did earlier on the screen. Single app mode, you can set it to where if you, for whatever reason, need it to run one app only and you don't want the user to get into anything else in the application or on the device, you can tell it this. Uh, the next option is OS update. Uh, this particular device is on the latest iOS 10.3.2. If I wanted to, I could click install, and if it was on a previous version, it would automatically have my tablet or iPhone download it and install it. Lost mode. I talked earlier about bricking a device. Um, this is where you do it. Uh, right now, this one is disabled because I don't want to brick it, but I can do something um, to the effect of I can uh, put a message on here and say, uh, this device is lost. Please alert IT if found. Put our number on here. And you can put another message here. And if I click enable on this, um, what it would do is it's going to instantly lock this device. It's going to put this message on the on the screen, and that's it. You cannot, no matter what you do you can't get into the device. It is effectively bricked. Um, the only way uh, that it can be unbricked is we have to come in here and assuming this was enabled, there would be another button here to disable it and we could disable it. Uh, this is useful to where if a, uh, like before, maybe you've lost a device, can't find it, um, but you don't necessarily want to wipe it like your other option is. You could just brick it to where hopefully somebody would find it, somebody would call the phone number, we said, say, yep, uh, we are definitely, we've definitely lost that device, can you bring it back to us? And we could disable the lock mode, or excuse me, lost mode, and uh, everything would go right back to normal. All the data would still be intact. But while this is enabled, the device is 100% useless. Uh, send notifications, I demoed that earlier. All that does is just put a, uh, a send a message to the device, perhaps uh, if you need the user to call you or need you to do maintenance, or you need to do maintenance on the device, it's easy to send them a message to it. Force a device to download and install the latest version of the OS, we just covered that as well. Uh, app management, uh, I'll show you this here. This is where you can force applications to be uh, placed on the system, and we have our setup for this uh, demo to where it automatically installs the system Meraki, uh, the Meraki Systems Manager app. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and delete this, so it's gone from the device, and then I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to tell it to here's the apps. I'm going to have it update that, confirm. I'm going to move this back over here. In a second, you can see that it automatically pushed the app back out to the device, and it's installing it. So go back into the deal. Allow, enable, allow. And as you can see, it tells me the status of it. Now, one thing to be aware of, this Meraki app is not what actually controls the device. It's just a front end for you to see that this stuff is working. This actually lives as a management profile. If you go into settings under general and see device management, we have a Meraki management profile installed on the device and this cannot be removed by the user. So if somebody were to go in and delete the app that I just showed you, device is still going to be 100% manageable uh, from our end on the web interface. And as you can see what we have here, um, on this particular device we have uh, just a couple of things set up. If you go into more details, you can really get into the nitty gritty of the security certificates. Um, the app, Meraki is the only one that we enforce on this particular demo, and restrictions. Uh, the screen I showed you that has, uh, you know, the listings of there's probably a hundred things that you can turn on or off would be listed here in this. And I'll also go into, 
I sh talked earlier about uh, the volume purchasing program. So here you can see that uh, Meraki Systems Manager, even though this is a free app with when you use Meraki, uh, we have 150 devices, uh, 147 of them are in use. But let's say this is a paid app. Here, here's a section where you could go in. Uh, you could actually you purchase the app through here. It's connected to the Apple App Store. You purchase as many as you need, and you can deploy them as you see fit. That is pretty much it. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, questions to be answered uh, during uh, the chat, and we'll do our best to accommodate anything you guys might have. Thank you.